<laughs> you got some buttons to push on that one. <laughs> oh, we're good. We got live. Oh, hello, everybody. We Bridget and I have just had a few technical difficulties getting on today, so we apologize for the delay hopping on. But good afternoon and welcome to our third Thursday Common Sense Parenting Facebook Live. My name is Gabby, as always, joined here with Common Sense Parenting expert Bridget Barnes, and we are talking about a very important important topic for August, which is back to school. So I know a lot of schools in Omaha especially went back this week. We've got some next week. So whenever you're going back to school, I feel like these tips will be very helpful for you and your kids during this season of life. So congratulations, you made it through summer and here we are ready to start the school year off on a strong foot. And we're gonna help you do that today by talking through some of our discussion topics. So if you're watching live and you've got a question for Bridget, please go ahead and comment it on this video and we'll get it answered during the live stream and make sure you also give this a big thumbs up. Okay, so like I said, it's back to school season. Here we are. Bridget, how can parents support their children during this time? Well, I think making the first day back to school a special day, do something a little different that, you know, you really hold for the first day, whether it is, you know, making pancakes or you get the first picture as <laughs> they're waking up or going off. Uh, they have their special clothes that they're wearing, something that makes the day the day, you know. Yeah. And um, I would definitely say plan for the day and prepare for it long before it happens so that kids uh, know the rules. You can review the rules of the school uh, with kids so they don't just do things and they don't know they're not supposed to do them or if they're little biddies, you know, crossing the street and just kind of go over things like that. And just I think planning helps everybody to calm down. They know where things are. They have their things. Uh, and uh, making the day special. So uh, I think that's really great because those memories last for a very long time. Even me, I think that when I yeah. got my son was very little and I cried the first day. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So special. Mm -hmm. So back to school can be overwhelming for both parents and kids. How can yes. we prevent feeling overwhelmed and manage our emotions during this busy season? Well, definitely you want to reinstate that uh, school day routine. You want to put those things that have been put aside for the summer back in place. And if you could, it would have been best if you started as, you know, early on uh, a couple of weeks before school started, you know, start putting those things back in. Uh, make sure that at least your routine is reasonable for your kids. You know, allow them to kind of ease back in a little bit uh, so that they are not overwhelmed. Break down those routines a little bit for kids so they're manageable. Don't say, you have to have your bed done and your chore done and your clothes on in the morning. So kind of, you know, make the break down those routines. Um, I like to create like a school equipment storage uh, yeah. box. You know, because, uh, you know, kids uh, will need things or they'll lose things or tissues or whatever. And so you don't have to run to the store and get that. So just kind of buy a little over so that you can have those things on hand for kids. And sometimes that helps parents too, uh, make, you know, going back to school not so hectic. Mm -hmm. Yes. What tools should we give our kids to prepare them to have the best year ever? So you talked about a toolkit. What should we put in it? <laughs> well, I'd like to talk about, you know, a toolkit that is not physical. It's the social skill toolkit. You know, uh, what most teachers will tell you is that you could have a genius on your hands, but if they can't follow instructions, stay on task, accept no for an answer, they're going to struggle in school. And so parents who give their kids those tools really are, you know, helping their kids be more successful in school. So why are you thinking about all the little gadgets or pencils or rulers or calculators and everything else that they might need? Social skills should be on the top of your list. I think also um, making sure you get involved with school. Well, sometimes we think about what we could do for the child to be involved, but uh, studies show that when parents are involved, kids do better in school. So whether you uh, join the PTA or, or, or you volunteer or you just uh, stay in communication with the teacher or send her a positive note of encouragement, uh, whatever you do, try to get involved as much as you possibly can 
in your child's school so that you can help them prepare uh, not only for the first day, but for, you know, the whole year. Yeah. When we think of going back to school, we often think of buying school supplies, meeting our teachers, getting new clothes, packing lunches, you know, the list goes on. Something that we may not be thinking of top mm. of mind is actually at the top of our mind, and that is mental health. So mm. how can kids and parents make their mental health a priority this school year? Yeah, by making it a priority. I mean, we sometimes think about uh, we automatically think about getting their physicals, you know, every, you know, where you're going to get that physical, but it would be a good idea to, to tell your pediatrician to also assess your child's mental health. Even if, you know, if it comes back nothing or you're like, oh, you know, I don't think there's anything there. Just make sure, because sometimes kids are not always telling us things. And I had a girlfriend once who had a daughter who was, had a lot of anxiety and she spent a good part of the school year out because of the anxiety. And, you know, and if you would have gotten assessed and maybe kind of been in front of that, maybe you could have been more prepared for it because it kind of caught everybody off guard. The other part to that, besides, you know, when you get your physical, get a, a, a get the mental assessment is to be able to get a appropriate referral for your kid. But communication is key. Communication is key uh, for mental health because sometimes other people are seeing things that you are not seeing. So talking to your teachers, talking to your children at Boys Town every day, we go over kids school day, we find out how they feel. Uh, if you do the same thing in your home, I know sometimes kids just give you the pat answer, but I would just say, let's go on a date. And then I take them around and get a Coke. And then if sometimes my son would talk to me and so it'd be a little chatterbox. I want to shut him up. No, I'm <laughs> sometimes he wouldn't say a word to me, but he knew I was always there. I was always available to listen to him. And so was his dad. So uh, communication is key to assessing children's mental health um, as well. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, if your child is dealing with some back to school anxiety, during this time, we are doing another Facebook Live next week that we actually just planned. And that's going to be with one of our new child psychologists, Dr. Yong Chong. So that will stream to our Boys Town Parenting Facebook page as long as our Boys Town, as well as our Boys Town Pediatrics page. So I'll make sure to link that event here in the comments. So if you want to tune into that next week, it's definitely, you know, help, helpful building block on top of this conversation. Oh, yeah, that sounds really exciting. I'm definitely going to tune tune into that one. Yeah. Also, you know, parents can go to the Boystown dot uh, org site uh, and just write in tips for going back to school or tips for assessing children. Uh, our hotline is definitely there for them. So lots of different things out there for parents and for kids. Yes. So this is a situational question we have submitted by one of our followers. It says. My child is not looking forward to going to school and keeps saying that he just wants to stay home with me. How can I swap his mindset and make him excited to go? Okay. Well, you know, uh, I think it's so sweet. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. That they want to stay that would with make us? me feel good. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you can stay There'll with be me. a day when they don't want to stay with you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, enjoy it while you can. Um, I would definitely say that uh, hearing children first, not trying to change their mind. Uh, if they have some concerns, uh, you know, talk to them about them, validate their feelings, uh, you know, be empathetic toward their feelings. I can, I hear you're saying that you're really scared or you don't want to go and you want to stay with me. You know, tell me why, you know, you rather not go to school, you know, as, you know, and figure out how they feel. Um, and some of those feelings to, will lead you to the reason why they feel that way. And then you can be able to help them process through that. And then think of strategies like I can walk you, uh, you know, to school or halfway and then we'll get your friends and they'll walk in front of, you know, and then you can walk by yourself. So giving them a little leeway, going to visit school, maybe it's a new school or a big scary place or, you know, and you can kind of go and dispel any kind of fears, meeting their teacher ahead of time uh, can be helpful. Uh, sometimes kids just uh, older kids, like if they're going to a new school and they're a teenager and they're like 
this is they're coming out of eighth grade and going to high school. It can be very, very scary. Mm -hmm. Journaling, journaling mm -hmm. for them might be a helpful way to get their feelings down. They might not tell you, but they might tell their journal yeah. uh, how they feel, um, that kind of thing. Maybe having a slumber party the night, you know, uh, the weekend before school starts so kids can share their fears with other kids. And those other kids are like, I'll be with you. And maybe other kids, maybe it's not you, maybe it's their friends that can help them out with that or a big sister or brother. Uh, I know that my big sister was really helpful to me transitioning to school because she was there. Uh, so it was really nice to have, you know, someone around my age kind of be with me. My parents were great, but sometimes it's yeah. nice to have somebody around your age to help you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And we're also leaving some helpful links in our comment section below. So we've got a guide to anxiety linked below, as well as a guide to helping your child love learning. So those are some helpful additional links to check out after this video concludes. The next question is, what advice do you have for a child entering middle school? How can I parent through all of these transitions? Well, you know, teaching children just to transition, uh, whether it be, you know, from one activity to the next or from uh, school uh, to the next or one grade to the next, uh, learning how to um, be able to manage your emotions and self-soothe and, uh, you know, those kind of things are things to talk about with kids. Uh, practice with children, okay, and help them, prompt them to put that in place, you know, when they need those kind of things. Okay, we're going to go to school today, and when you feel anxious, what are you going to do? You know, um, how are you feeling today? And, you know, those kind of things kind of prompt the, the teaching you've already put in place. So I think that um, when kids have problems with transitioning, I give them plenty of leave wait time. So if I have a kid who uh, sometimes the parents will tell me they have a child who putters around in the morning. That's their way of just avoiding this, <laughs> this thing and makes themselves late for whatever the event is. So, you know, putting an extra 15, 20 minutes on that morning for them, having them do a lot of things at night, their bag is in the car. <laughs> they're not, you know, they're just getting themselves ready in the morning and just kind of taking some of their stumbling blocks and challenges out of their way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think could be helpful to kids transitioning problems. Just being that real, you know, soundboard, I think um, getting some really good books. The Boys Town Press has some really nice books about kids transitioning. I can't think of one at the top of my head, but uh, for some of the younger kids, some of those RJ books uh, where a child is having problems getting involved with school or whatever the case may be, and then talking about it, maybe a a movie and talking about how that person's transitioning or what's getting in their way. And that's the same as your kiddo. So I think there's lots of ways to go about it and there's no one clear right way. Everything fits for your child might be different than some other child. So I just think uh, communication is the key. Talk to your kid, set up some things that remove stumbling blocks for them, give them um, plenty of time to transition and um, just check on them and see how the transition is going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and something I thought of when you, you know, when you mentioned transitions, we all often think too, especially from grade school to middle school, middle school to high school is making friends, which mm -hmm. I know that can cause a little bit of anxiety when it comes to back to school. So how can parents support their kids through, you know, making new friends, maybe if they're going through a challenge with their group of friends during school, situations like that, which I know we could probably do a whole episode on this, but we'll, <laughs> we'll put that on our list, everyone. <laughs> yeah, well, we had this one mom who had this little boy, uh, she had gotten divorced and then moved, uh, moved to a new location, and then he had to make new friends on top of a divorce. So it was really stressful for him and for her. Um, and the, again, the one thing I would say is just talking to your kids about their fears. Cause sometimes, you know, if you kind of dispel that, like, well, no, not everybody's going to hate you. They don't know you yet. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and no, you don't have to make a lot of friends. You don't have to be super popular. You have to just find one good friend. And well, how do I do that? Well, 
hey, how about you find out what you like to do? And when you find out what you like to do, is it band, is it this, is it that? Then you're going to find somebody else who's liking that if they're in that group. And then you find the one person. And guess what? They have friends. <laughs> you know? And then they get to be your friend. So starting out small so they don't feel so overwhelmed, like it's a big school and I have to be popular. Because sometimes kids go for popularity versus making friends. There's two different things uh, in that. And uh, not forcing them. Some kids are a little slower to that. They're more introverted. They're uh, they're not going to have a slew of friends. They're not going to join everything. And uh, so uh, finding out who your kid is and what's good for them. What, you know, one shoe does not fit everybody. So I think that, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's good to have friends. Um, but to have real friends, it does take time. I tell kids that all the time. You know, it's not something that always happens overnight. We live in an instant world where we want everything to be fast, to be now. And um, so it, it takes some work on your part, too. You just don't get friends because you want them. Right. You know, you you have to be a friend. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you go to school and somebody drops their pencil and then you pick it up and give it to them, you know, you're creating an opportunity to to make a friend. Mm -hmm. you know? So I think that uh, teaching kids how to be a friend to someone is a, a good way for them to have friends. Yes, for sure. So we have a few more questions here. So if you're watching live and you have a question for Bridget, now is the time to leave it in the comments so we can get it answered in time. And if you're watching this uh, later after this live presentation concludes, if you're watching it as a playback video and you do have a question, you can go ahead and message our page and I'm happy to pass it along to Bridget to get it answered. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about homework and study skills. My child isn't the best about getting homework done on time or at least they weren't last year. How can I help them start the year off strong with good studying skills and make sure that it carries through the rest of the school year? Okay, well, I'm going to first tell you guys what I did yes. <laughs> with my kiddo who just was really not good at doing his homework. Yeah. And he had a learning disability on board. So I definitely talked to the counselor. I definitely talked to the teacher about what areas he was really struggling with. Then uh, we made sure that he had a study buddy at school and he had study time at school to st get those areas that he's really struggling with done at school. Uh -huh. Nurses coming home. He doesn't remember what he's supposed to do. I can't really help him, you know. So yeah. we, you know, those areas where he was really struggling, he did a lot of that at school with a study buddy. But that's communication with your teacher, communication with a counselor, you know. And so communicating is your key, not just waiting for kids to come home and then expecting them to do their homework. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing, you know, what happened is that he brought home the homework he was very uh, confident about being able to do. And then the next thing I did was, um, you know, kids come home and sometimes they're hungry and, and we are, or they're tired or they're cranky and we want them to start their homework, right? <laughs> so I gave him a little leave time after um, school, that whole process time, kind of a little downtime. Um, to eat, to, you know, just relax. Uh, and then he had a set time that happened every day. It had to be very set for him. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, you know, kind of having that usual time and then making a really nice place for a child to study, you know, even if it's just a little nook, you know, that there's that pillow, there's that chair, that's the desk or whatever the case may be, that it's quiet, uh, they can focus, you know, that kind of thing. So having a nice, well-lit place that, uh, you know, uh, the child can study. The other thing is to, um, you know, break up study time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, having kids sit there for two or three hours and really not get anywhere is not what you want to do. So having little breaks and then talking to your teacher again to find out how many problems can my kid do in this much time? And they can tell you because a lot of the things are timed. So they can, you know, say, okay, yeah, he should be able to do this. He's really struggling with that, but we're going to ha handle that during his study time at school. So kind of really talk uh, to your teacher so you can set up a good homework time for your kid. Yeah. Tag teaming, tag teaming at study time. So if you yeah. have two parents, 
tag team in and out so you don't burn yourself out. Like, oh, I'm tired of this. So, you know, one person, you know, helps out with the study and then they tag out and, you know, it might be 20 minutes on and then 20 minutes off just so nobody gets tired. Mm -hmm. And then giving the child plenty of breaks um, to, you know, have a cracker cheese, you know, juice box, whatever, and then get back on task uh, would be good. Yeah. And, you know, that's just the beginning. I think if you go up to our site, it's a plethora, a list oh, of yeah. things, what we can do about homework. So um, please do go up there too, guys, after after this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boystown.org. If you go to that search bar at the top of the page and just type in homework or study, mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff will come up. That's super helpful. Okay, so we have just three more questions here. What advice do you have for balancing school, sports, extracurriculars, friends, and family time? Well, you know, prioritize. Yeah. And less is more. Okay, so um, family, oh, in my world, it always comes first. <laughs> and then, you know, friends and extracurricular activities, you know, um, you know, I'm sorry, school and then uh, extracurricular activities, that kind of thing. So my thing would be, um, you know, when I say less is more, sometimes kids get over involved or they take on too much uh, and they can't, they're overwhelmed by it. And uh, they have so much homework uh, and everything that they just can't seem to balance their, you know, sports and everything that they're doing. So I would just really say, you know, get one thing that they really love to do uh, and as they're, you know, as they get better at that thing and they can manage it and they show you they can manage it, if they can figure out, to, you know, to do another thing, you know, that's fine. I mean, I had a sport, but I also was on a speech team, but I could balance that and do my homework and my parents, you know, trusted me to do so. And I proved that I could do it. And as soon as I was getting bad grades or something like that, I'm pretty sure they would have pulled the plug on one of those or two. <laughs> so before you get to that, kind of have kids earn the right or the privilege to have a lot of things going on or more than one thing's going on um and that people are way more important uh than you know every sport or you know extra thing that you could be doing um but uh definitely put that family time in there because you won't know what kids need from you or if they're overwhelmed if they don't have family time and know who their friends are because their friends have a huge influence on some of the things they want to get involved in or some of the things they put away that they used to love and why are they doing that for those friends or, or what's going on with that and just finding that balance a little bit at a time so kids can learn how to balance that. And then you can put a little bit more if they if they want that or they can do that versus just join everything and do everything. Yeah. Yeah. That is just that's overwhelming. I like what you said about, you know, picking one or two things that you're good at and passionate about and making sure to prioritize the most important thing, family, school, things like that. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is, how can parents support teachers during this time, especially in Omaha, especially where Boys Town Headquarters is, the OPS district is having a huge shortage with teachers, and I know that's not just a Midwest problem, so how can we support teachers as they're feeling overwhelmed and their mental health is kind of being tested? Yeah, well, definitely, um... The number one thing that uh, sometimes uh, new teachers leave school, well, there's three things, but I'll just tell you about one of them. And that is behavior in the classroom or feeling overwhelmed by kids' behaviors. And so why, that's why those social skills are so important. When you have a kid, when teachers can go in a classroom and actually teach because they're not dealing with behavior, yeah, uh, that, that really would help them. You can buy them all the nice things or send them all the cards, but if your kid's behavior is off, off you know, it, it's, it's a problem for yeah. the child, number one, and definitely for everybody else in the classroom, including that teacher. So focusing on teaching kids social skills so they can be successful in school. We have a wonderful class called Parenting for School Success, which is all about helping parents uh, challenge their children to be successful in school. And even kids who are academically successful can, you know, be helped by learning other things that challenge them and move them forward. So that would be a good class I would suggest parents to go to. Um, 
Definitely communication again with the teacher, finding out what's going on and how they're feeling and maybe even starting that out with, you know, I want to thank you uh, for your service to my kid and I appreciate you uh, starting out with that and then finding out how they're feeling. How are you feeling? How are things going? And hearing that person and then they're more likely to hear you as well if you have concerns. So communicate with the teacher, not just a text when something's wrong. Right. But yeah checking in on a really consistent basis because then you have an ally and not just you know someone that you don't really know uh so just check in on a consistent basis with with your teacher about you know things going on because there might be some serious things like bullying or whatever else that might be going on with kiddos that you'll you know want to talk to the teacher about like this is happening not on the school grounds but right outside and they're both in the same classroom. So wanted to let you know this is going on. Have you seen anything? So communication uh, is key. I would, uh, I would strongly suggest like just getting, like I said before, getting involved to help the teacher out. I used to stuff all the envelopes or, you know, mailers or things like that. I'd go and help to um, dress up the room or whatever the doors you know with teachers because they stay way late they come on the weekend my sister's a teacher and she never turns it off you know it doesn't seem like to me and now with a sh shortage we have to keep the ones that we have so be kind to your teachers <laughs> be thoughtful and encourage them and i i think we'll get people to come back and we'll get people who want to stay yeah couldn't agree more the last question is, what resources, I know we've talked about a few already, but what other resources does Voice Town Parenting offer to help us all have the most successful school year? Well, definitely right now we're offering classes in lots of schools, lots of school districts are offering our parenting classes uh, for parents. Uh, we offer parent cafe, so if you just want to come for a topic, and you want us to come to your school, we'll come and do that, whether we're talking about technology or how to help kids uh, do their homework or do their chores or whatever the case may be. We can definitely come and do that here in the Omaha area. Um, and now that we can do things online, people from all over the state can go uh, to those sessions as well. I definitely say, you know, anything that you can do as far as getting on the boystown.org site and finding information for your kid or for yourself is well worth your time. Uh, our uh, hotline has a wonderful um, Your Life, Your Voice. I think that's great for teenagers. Uh, and I find that to be very helpful. If you haven't searched that out, please do. Uh, I think it would be a key for teenagers um, going through a lot of transitions this year. We saw with after COVID that um, our kids' grades were down and they weren't recovering as well as we had liked, of course, with the studies. And this is across the country, across the US. And so especially sixth graders seem to do better than eighth graders. And that was a shock to everybody. So, you know, because kids are struggling uh, with their social skills and with their academic skills, uh, reaching out to Boys Town, um, I, you know, we're here for you. And if you need us, feel free to give us a call. <laughs> yes, very good. Well, we hope that this August chat was helpful to you and that you and your family have the most amazing school year. As always, you know, we are always here as a resource to help you and help whatever issue you are dealing with when it comes to parenting. So like Bridget said, you can go on boystownparenting.org and ask one of our professional experts for advice. You can message our Facebook page and we can direct you to find the resources that you may need. And we're here for you. So thank you so much, Bridget. It's always great to chat with you and I look forward to our chat next month. Okay. See you next month, everybody. Bye-bye.